Hey everyone, I'm here with a slightly different kind of video this time. Uh, this is a very, very sped up version of uh, my Bullet Journal 2021 gold foil balloon layout. Uh, so this is my first time ever trying bullet journaling and I've been watching uh, tutorials and looking around and there's a few uh, people who've done gold uh, or gold foil or other colored foil balloon um, spreads in their journals and I thought well I would really love to do that for mine and so I uh, sort of got all the bits and pieces together. Um, this is not really intended to be a tutorial video as such, as a detailed how to do it kind of thing, uh, because there's already a lot of people out there who already probably say it better than I can. Uh, but I just thought I would show the process. There's a lot of people wanting to see it done and maybe just talk about some of the thoughts I've had about it. Mm. So the, first of all, the, the stuff that you need for it, it's really not about the materials, I would stress that. Uh, as what a lot of other people have said, you only need really basic stuff. You don't need fancy Copic markers, you don't need fancy pencils. I happen to use fancy pencils, but it's just because what I happen to have nearby. But I really don't think that makes that much difference. Uh, these are just Crayola textures, so they're just the things that kids would use, and you can get them in, in a, well, whatever store you have near you. Uh, you can get a simple yellow highlighter just anywhere, really, just any office supply type of thing. Probably the only special sort of thing would be the white gel pens that I used at the very end. Uh, you can definitely vary quality when you come to choosing uh, white gel pens, so I would shop around for white gel pens and find something that definitely does work for you. Don't just assume that any old white gel pen is going to be good, because they do vary. Uh, so, yeah, the, the materials really are not the key factor in this. I think what's been really interesting for me about this has been seeing how uh, the way... Th this, is, this is quite a different kind of medium or mixed media type of thing than what I normally do. So I've done a lot of realism, but I've not done hyper-realism, and I haven't done, like, coloured pencil work or anything like that, really. Uh, or not very much. And the thing about having these stark sort of texture blobs that you can kind of see here at the start of the process is that they really force you to think about where the sharps and where the softs are. So sharp edges and soft edges in any kind of piece are really important. And I think that's probably one of the things I've struggled with throughout all the last 10 years of my doing illustrations in some form or another is um, finding that I am never super sure where to put hards and where to put softs and I think a lot of other people also probably struggle with this without realizing exactly what it is they're struggling with and I think a lot of people tend to put too many softs and not enough hards because it is really daunting going in there and putting in like a big dark shape with sharp hard edges on there uh, because it does look terrible as you can see at the start uh, and honestly this this process is really uh, good for forcing you to think about where are those hards, where are those softs, and because you can't easily or really at all blend the texture after you've put them down, you are forced to think about like what are the in-between colors that I have in my pencils, what do I have that I can use to kind of soften that, and what parts need to be softened the most, and they really, it just kind of pulls you back from over blending everything and over softening everything and I think that that was the thing that was really the coolest thing for me and I think hopefully will uh, have an impact on how I do things in the future as well so if if you are sort of new to to doing realism of any kind or just trying to get used to traditional media I think foil balloons or foil type objects like this could be a really great um, thing to use to sort of get uh, sort of more familiar with that process of blending, like choosing where to blend and where not to blend and really trying to decide on uh, getting enough contrast in there. Because I think having seen a lot of beginner work, because I've worked in education uh, and art tutoring and things like that, having seen lots and lots and lots of beginner drawings and paintings and things, I think probably one of the number one biggest things errors, mistakes, things to improve on, whatever you want to call it, that beginners have in traditional drawings is that they don't have enough contrast. So I think that that might be why 
uh, something like this ends up being so successful for people uh, because it forces you by putting those dark green or whatever dark browns you choose to use putting those down with a with a texture means you can't erase that back you can't really cover that up it's just going to have to be that really sharp dark contrasting shadow in there and it forces you to use contrast much more effectively so i think that might be why these uh these kinds of spreads and that kind of hyper realism is so popular and that might be uh, a part of helping me get from doing things that might only just be classified as like maybe realism to hyper realism that might be something that's helping me uh, improve my drawings as well as just being forced to use more contrast uh, my other thoughts about it um, I I guess I just uh, me personally I pencil I did like a pencil outline of where all of the, the numbers were going to go uh, and then I just lightly erase my pencil outlines before I do anything in color. So I think a few other people would have said things like this, but I think it's just important for, for other people to know if they're also just starting out, uh, and maybe they come from a bullet journaling background and not an illustration background. So I am new to bullet journaling, but not new to drawing or painting. Uh, it would be if you're penciling things out, which I think a lot of bullet journal people do, uh, and then you're going to go and put color or shading or do other things with it. Always just take an eraser and just erase your lines. Not like really hard, but just reasonably. Just so that you can still see the hint of where your outline is. But just so you don't have all that lead there. Because that will be a pain. And you don't want to go back over that or have to try and get rid of that later on. And it, it can actually catch. Especially in things like that light yellow. It would catch. And I, I don't think that would be a good thing. Uh... And I think maybe even in this case, if you used the texture outline like I have over the pencil, you could probably even just erase back the rest of that pencil if you really wanted to. Uh, but I think most of this covers that original outline pretty well. Uh, another thing maybe to just point out as a tip that may not be coming up in the other tutorials, uh, don't outline everything. And I know there's like a really hard temptation when you're new to drawing or illustrating to want to outline everything. Uh, with like a dark outline or just something like that and it's still hard for me even to this day uh, having known that for years but don't feel obliged to outline every single edge dark uh, because it doesn't give it that realistic look because real things don't have a dark outline all around them and I think that's a very beginner level sort of thing that I see a lot of so uh, you'll see that the balloons don't have a dark outline around every edge uh, and that's also contributing to that overall effect I think of them looking convincing uh, probably another thing that I think was really great about this process and going through this uh, was learning to get through what I call the ugly phase I think there's a few other people who also call it the ugly phase so I didn't invent that term but uh, there's sort of a, a mental battle that goes into drawing and painting just as much as physical and, and everything else that's going on and I think a lot of people are struggling with that mental battle, but not being willing to articulate it or not wanting to talk about it. Uh, but I, just as much as anyone probably will, especially at the start, go, oh, no, 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 this looks awful. And this uh, technique or this method of drawing with the with the textures and the blending the back in over the, over the mess, starting with a mess and then working back, is, is so great for working on that ugly phase fear. So I think a lot of people are getting into their ugly phase, which every picture has. Trust me, I, every picture has it. I mean, I certainly do. Uh, you know, I don't. I think there'd be a very, very tiny handful of people on this planet who don't even have an ugly phase in their work. Uh, and that's what I love about time lapses and why I have so many of them on my uh, channel, is because I think a lot of people only see that end output, or maybe only see sort of the last, the last sort of twenty percent of a process, and they think, well. I've started, I've put out all of the lines and I've started putting in colour. I'm about 30-40% in and it is looking terrible. Uh, so I might as well stop now. And that's probably the killer of a lot of things. Or, or it'll just wear you down mentally where you're looking at it and going, Oh God, it's so bad. I wouldn't want anyone to see this. I don't, you know, it's so bad. I don't even think it has any potential. There's probably no point. And given that this probably did take me more than five hours to do. I don't actually have an, a set number, but I know that when I put the footage down at 500%, it was still an hour altogether. Um, 
I think it's it's at least five hours or more per sort of major thing that I do, whether it's traditional or digital. I think a lot of people are overwhelmed at the idea that well, they're, you know, they're two hours in and it does not look good. And should I put another three hours in? Uh, and I think this process is really great for that because it sort of helps you approach it mentally differently where you sort of realize, well, I've got to this, now I've got to this, I've got to put the highlighter down, I've got to put the texture, the, the green bits down, I've got to get some pencil, I've got to blend this out, where could I blend that out, I could blend this out. Okay, don't worry though, because we're also going to put the white gel pen over the top, so there's still another layer to this to go. Uh, so you've got a different kind of mental approach to it, which I think is just so valuable. And I hope that it will help others as much as it helped me to sort of really reflect on the the ugly phase and not to be so afraid of it or not to give up early and not finish things not because you're lazy as such but just because you find it really terrifying to watch this thing look so bad for so long really uh so yeah I don't want to repeat too much of what probably gets said in a lot of other gold foil tutorials or anything it's not really a tutorial it's just an interesting reflection and sharing my process and my thoughts because I think a lot of people could achieve this or something very similar to this uh, using you know affordable materials and it just takes a bit of time and I think you know just uh just getting over mental hurdles is, is a lot more of this than what you'd think. And I know that sounds very easy coming from me. Uh, easy for you to say. You're probably thinking. Uh, or not. You might have gone to sleep by now. I don't know. But uh, I really... I have done a, a wide variety of things. And I have seen things that I think, yeah, that's genuinely a very difficult thing. Uh, but I don't think this one is actually so difficult. It's just a way of mentally looking at things in a very literal way and going, "What? well, where is that and where does that go? I'll just pop it in, even if it looks a bit clumsy or harsh. And then you just, you can take that time to just work back in a little bit and just soften up things. And it honestly was, uh, it wasn't really until 90% of the way through, I was looking at it even towards the end thinking, this didn't work you know how embarrassing like these these tutorials make it look so easy and it, it just didn't even work like I I'm staring at this horrible weird textury mess that I've made uh and I I won't be able to show anyone and I've ruined my my new brand new bullet journal and you know I what do I do and then I remember thinking well you know I one of my friends was like oh let's have a look and see how, how far you've got with it. And I took a photo of it, sent them the photo on my phone. And as I looked at it through the photo on my phone, probably with slightly fresher eyes through that interpretation of the lens, I was like, wow, it actually looks so great. And it took maybe a day or two even of just staring at my own drawing to actually see it the way other people see it, to actually see it as a cohesive thing. So I think if you are in, in the in the process of drawing the thing and you are the creator it's a little bit harder for you to see your drawing objectively and accurately so that makes sense uh and don't my advice would be don't just give it up until until you've really done the whole thing and then just sit for a little bit and really come back to that and decide is it actually so terrible uh or is that just because your eyes haven't really adjusted to it and i think especially with a like a hyperrealism process like this, it's very difficult to not just see big texture, green blobby bits and stuff everywhere like that. Because it's just you were there. You remember how you made it and you can't see anything other than that process that you used to make it. So I think if you're giving this one a go, I say just make sure you do actually go all the way to the end because ugly phase kills everything and it would definitely kill this uh, a lot so if you don't if you don't finish it it really will not it will not look finished at all and that sounds very obvious but I think a lot of people are not finishing things enough to have formed the judgment that it's worth giving up on I think it would be better to have finished the whole thing to the best of your ability and to have done everything you think you could have and then go, well, it still really isn't enough. I'll just put it away. And then you have another go. You do a second project and then you improve that way and just put those things that didn't work aside than to have lots and lots of half finished things or to write yourself off and say, well, it's me. I can't do it. Well, it's not. I don't think it's actually related to you uh, or even the materials in this case. I think this one is very much just having to give it 
the whole chance. You'll have to go all the way through past 90, 95% before it really does actually start to look like something decent. So that's my tip for that. Uh, and another thing, I guess, to keep in mind, uh, do sharpen your pencils. And I know lots of art channels probably tell you to sharpen your pencils, but I'm not actually really a traditional artist. Mostly I'm a digital artist and I get a little bit lazy for sure with paints and pencils. And I know that it's important to sharpen the pencils, but until I did something that really relied on doing a lot of colored pencil like this, I did not appreciate how much easier it is to just have them very sharp and not just sharpened, like as in not blunt, but they mean sharp, sharp. So I would resharpen frequently. So that's probably why my hands jump in and out of this all the time. Uh, so you you really got to sharpen them over and over. Uh, keep them as sharp as possible, even if you're not doing a sharp line, just to, just to do your blending, just to do everything. It's so much easier to have them really sharp. Uh, and I just use a little handheld sharpener. I'm not someone who bothers with a knife, although I know how to do that. Uh, and I guess if pencil longevity is really, really that important to you, then by all means, but I don't use the pencils enough that I worry about wearing out or running out of a particular color or anything yet anyway. So just sharpen them up for sure. Uh, so I don't want to talk for probably the entire uh, duration of this video because it's actually a little bit of a long one, but I think I'll uh, just put in a little bit of background music or something and you can listen to that and just watch the, the rest of this process and uh, hopefully maybe some of those thoughts were helpful as someone coming from illustration into bullet journaling and someone who's more of a digital artist coming into like a hyper realism with with pencils and things just a, a different perspective and hopefully to help people appreciate that this isn't some kind of voodoo magic although I I thought it was voodoo magic and I was sitting right there watching it happen myself uh but I do think it is actually very much within everybody's um ability to do this and maybe you might need to try uh one, one or two times before you get something quite as sharp as this uh, if you don't normally draw at all if you're coming in completely without any experience then maybe you might need to have a few practice goes at it before it gets quite that sharp I'm not sure uh, but if you've already been someone who does drawing and never thought you could do something with hyper realism in it which I never thought I could do I was like well that's that's for other people that's for those those are uh, those hyper realist artists you know elsewhere then I, I think you know it's actually very much within everyone's reach and the materials don't need to hold you back and it's really just a mental battle so you know no big deal right anyway so i will let you enjoy the rest of this recording uh and hopefully have another video of some kind out again soon thank you for watching and have fun <laughs>